Mr. Deputy Lieutenant, Mr. Lord Mayor, Grand Master, Representatives, we'll have a few words, have an act of dedication. As we finish, a bugler is going to sound the last post and we'll keep a two minute silence and the ceremony will finish with the Ravale. There is a tradition at military funerals that you would never sound the last post on its own. The Ravale always follows first thing in the morning. I think what we are doing here is entrusting Y. Dean Weavers with this monument. Um, in one sense, I don't think any of us got the right to do that. And who does it belong to? Um, but we're actually gathered together. It doesn't belong to the city council. Um, it doesn't belong to the church. But the fact that we are standing here together is a collaborative endeavour. So may I just say a couple of things. The Odd Fellows are a friendly society. They are basically about being a cooperative activity. And without wandering anywhere near controversy, that level of celebration of interdependence is never entirely popular. From the days when the Combination Acts, I'm talking about the early 19th century when the Oddfellows were new, prevented them meeting publicly, which is why they still have secret passwords. It's not because they're a secret society. It's because actually the state banned them from gathering as cooperative ventures at the beginning. Through to things like the ending of the mutualization of building societies because people realized they could take the money and run rather than allowing them to continue as mutual um, organizations to help support other people. <coughs> the idea of working collaboratively and interdependently is not actually always at the front of the minds of people. So that's the first thing. And sacrifice in war must be the extreme example of that. <coughs> the second thing is that this was in danger of being lost. People who lose their memory, who have dementia, we know, almost feel, although this is not true, as if they are less people. A society which loses its memory and allows things to be lost um, would be in the same state. So we are not here for a heritage activity. We are not here for a nostalgia activity. <coughs> We're here about what our society actually remembers and who we are. And finally, I took the names. The men of worth have done a much more thorough job that's displayed outside, just of those who have died. And one of the things that I discovered is that in the odd fellows in those days and amongst those names, people are more likely to have been working in a worsted factory than not. So when next year a new factory is built next door and this memorial goes there, the newest widening weaving, the only surviving uh, weaving going on in the valley, you know, will have custody of a memorial in which the majority of the people were those who more than a hundred years ago were working in that industry. There is a direct link. I picked out one name. There is slightly more information than I've found on the Men of Worth's display. Albert Victor Hans is named on that memorial. I pick him out partly because he's one of the few I found a lot out about, but also because of some really special bits of his name being there. The Hans family lived in Ivy Bank Terrace, so they actually looked down on us here the new factory will look up immediately at his front door. He was born in June 1891, baptised at six or seven weeks in the parish church by one of my predecessors, John Wade, who was Patrick Bronte's successor and who had that church built about 11 years earlier. He was in the 1911 census working in the Worcester factory. He was a spinning overlooker so the overseer of a line. Um, I think the odd fellows um, at that time um, were a lot of people who were, as it were, in the middle order. Um, they weren't 
all working hands, nor were they the most prosperous part of the community, but it was a friendly society for them. So the fact that so many of them were overlookers. His name appears not only here, but it is one of 72,000 names that appears on the Taifal monument. He died in the Battle of the Somme. He has no known grave. So as we generally remember all these names, perhaps um, Albert Victor Hans stands for all of them. I have here the words that the British Legion and Churches Together in Britain and Ireland agreed for a form of service for Remembrance Sunday. It finishes with an act of dedication. Will you strive for all that makes for peace? Will you work for a just future for all humanity? Uh, will you seek to heal the wounds of war? The suggested response is the words, we will. If this is more than a heritage activity, more than a nostalgic activity, then you're responding, we will, if you are willing, um, in just a moment, to those three questions, we'll make it so. We rededicate this memorial and entrust it to the care and custody of Wydean Weavers. We give thanks for the interdependence of the odd fellows and of those willing to give for others. We give thanks for the extreme interdependence of those who gave their life in the First World War. We give thanks for those dedicated to preserving our memory and theirs. Let us commit ourselves as those who rededicate this memorial. Would you stand? <clears throat> Let us commit ourselves to responsible living and faithful <clears throat> service. Will you strive for all that makes for peace? We will. We will. Will you seek to heal the wounds of war? We will. will you work for a just future for all humanity? We will. Coming from the parish church in which Albert Victor Hans and others were baptized, a Christian prayer. Merciful God, we offer to you the fears in us that we have not yet cast out by love. May we accept the hope you have placed in the hearts of your people and live lives of justice, courage and mercy in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We prepare to keep silence for two minutes. <laughs>
grant to the living grace to the departed rest and make us the first fruits of the justice and peace for which we long and pray.